Trade Limitless on HMX, the next-gen decentralized perpetual exchange. Trade crypto FX commodities with up to 1,000x leverage on the Arbitrum network. Benefit from low fees, multi-asset collateral support, and cross-margin flexibility. Check them out. From meme to utility, Floki has it all. NFT metaverse game called Valhalla. Floki University, DeFi, charity, and shopping. Floki is governed by the people, for the people. Floki, together, there is no stopping us. This has been a sponsored part, highlighting our, our sponsors and our partners at The Burbness. And I'm your host for today's session, for the third session of the day. This is going to be actually the fourth session. Hold on, there's too many. Actually, I'm, I'm getting lost already. And uh, I'm Andreas Lunchik, CMT, Charter Market Technician. Some people know me as CryptoBurb. And I wish I could speak for hours, but I do a better job just shutting up and listening to the people who are way smarter than I am. And yes, they are in the room today because we're going to have an excellent session about harnessing the power of sector rotation the, with the ROG principles research uh, presented by. The one and only Julius the Campanar. And before we go there, let's play some ads and two. This is about a ride, my good friend Julius the Campanar of Relative Rotation Graphs as the registered trademark, as this excellent toolkit that has been used popularly worldwide by so many traders, by so many legends in the space, people and faces that you know well. And I'm honored. Julius, how is it going, my friend? It's going well. And as always, you're selling yourself short, my friend. That is uh, one thing you gotta learn. You are a very humble man. And sometimes you gotta step up because you're doing a great job. Speaking of selling short, you know how how tall I am, right? I'm literally short compared to your giant. <laughs> Which is selling yeah, short is the right thing. Yeah, we actually we actually uh, did some field research on that in New York this year. So uh, so yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's proven. Oh man, that's so funny, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to time time my smile smile right because I, when I smile too much, you know, my head aches. Jesus, there's so many ah. so much of so much of the incredible and the incredible value that you're about to get for everybody who's tuning in for the last session of the day at the Free Trading Congresses. This is the fifth edition of Free Trading Congress when you get all the reliable education, all the reliable techniques that you're not getting anywhere in the world right now. This is the only place to learn from Julius the Campanauer at this very moment that there is so much to be learned. There is so much of the wealth of knowledge and experience speaking through this uh, great looking gentleman, because there is so much of the history and the relative rotation graphs approve it all. So if we are to, well, run a little bit of intro from your side, Julius, uh, why don't you take a minute and just run us through your history? Uh, what, what happened to kind of like take you where you are right now in your life being an extremely successful RRG founder and inventor? It looks as if you see my charts. Um, so who is this guy? I... Um... I started out after high school. I um, I joined the Royal Dutch Air Force, uh, and I was trained in as an officer uh, uh, in an economics position, actually. And that's where also my interest in um, financial markets started. Uh, after eight years in the Air Force, I I left and I went to work in the financial area. Um, in various buy side positions and various sell side positions and uh, buy side positions means that you work for a company that is an asset manager so basically the people who are buying the stocks and bonds and whatever and the sell side position is where you're the broker where you talk to the buy side and you try to uh, engage them in trading um, 2008 to 2014 i went back to the buy side and in 2014 i founded rrg research that whole rrgs came to life were um basically born uh during my time on the sell side um you need to actually stand out and have something special to sell to all these 
uh, hotshot fund managers on the other side. And over time, that became our what, what is now known as RRG, because at the time, it didn't really even look like an RRG. But uh, that, that has grown into RRG. And in 2014, I founded uh, RRG Research. From a, uh, a personal note, I have lived and worked in central Amsterdam for over 20 years. Uh, and then four years ago, we moved to an old horse boarding stable outside of Amsterdam, about 50 minutes out south of Amsterdam, very close to the Belgian border. And um, I have one wife, my second wife, got four kids, one daughter still at home, five grandkids, nine horses, three dogs and two cats. So what else do you want to know? Oh man, this this makes me laugh all the time, and it's such a positive matter of that. This is this is so incredible, everybody, because Julius, you know, well, the 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 funniest part and the realest part is that it's actually true for every every single word that Julius has just shared. It's true. I've seen it all. I've seen all the pictures. You should guys <laughs> see how this gentleman operates the the tractor, basically, right? All those all those crazy uh, crazy machines is just like nothing. It's so simple of the time of the charts of the markets like how how much time do you spend on that again on the daily basis i mean well i mean on a daily basis probably i don't know 30 30 minutes to an hour but in the weekend it's a little bit more um and you know what there's a there's a funny story about the uh, the loader because we we have you, you got tractors and you got loaders we i operate the loader <laughs> which the basically uh, yeah, there is a difference, but it's a very versatile thing. A loader is one of these things that, that can make very short turns and has a, um, a boom where you can put various attachments. So you can put on a bucket to scoop manure or put in pins to move hay bales. Um, and huh. I, I use all of that. And I mean, I always tell people that, you know, you got these, I, I just turned 60 years old. So I, I probably it's probably not my midlife crisis. I'm, I've passed that, but... You know, get guys my age, you know, no kids anymore, got a bit of money. They start buying cars and motorbikes and stuff. And then I tell people, yeah, I bought tractors and loaders and all the equipment that needs to go with it. And oh, um, I'm from, from in, you know, according to uh, related to crypto, I actually bought my loader from profits I made in the crypto market. So it's oh, quite man. funny. Two, two positions in Ripple and Cardano. And I... Um, I, I, I told myself, I still, have, I still haven't done it, but I, I'm still planning to do it, to put the logos of Ripple and Cardano on each side of the bucket of the, of the loader. So. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's a, that's a good of a story. I remember us touching the base about Ripple and Cardano the other day. Exactly. In New York yeah. City. Uh, that was. And meanwhile, again, congratulations, because for 60 years old, you're outstandingly sharp, smart, and well-built, my man. This is some good achievement right there. Yeah, thank you. Uh, trying, trying. It's getting harder though. Trying. It was e it was easier when you're forty, but still okay. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Man. That's that's uh, yeah. That, I'll take it as a, on the positive note. Still, I appreciate it, right? And wish everybody because Julius has just turned sixty, which he uh, proclaimed actually right here in front of us. So congratulations and happy of birthdays. Uh, to Thank you, you my friend uh, from us and on behalf of my own, on behalf of the Bourboness and the whole community, uh, I feel responsible to pay the happiest of birthdays on your hands, my man. So uh, this is, uh, there's so much time, so much joy that I have every time I talk to you, man. And, uh, you know, there's always this, this inevitability that I always feel that we should do this so much more often, right? And then everybody, you know, is, is, is this, you know, the time flies so fast, doesn't it? It's just, man, I'm, I'm oh. looking at my, I'm looking at my watch. It's 15th November. Can you believe that? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Um, it's crazy, man. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. So speaking of crazy stuff, crazy, um, I'm referring to it as a crazy because it actually opened my mind and eyes wide open. What I learned when I applied for CMT, for Charter Market Technician Association, and the whole conduct and the examination, I once found this in the CMT Bible, so let's call it this way, in the actual curriculum, I found those very interestingly looking charts, the, the, the layouts, you know, with some strange arrows, and I had not a single clue what they were doing until I started reading more and more and go deeper and deeper. And then it actually made a lot of sense to me. Not a lot of sense because it has 
a whole lot of sense in it. It's just that I started understanding something that I'd never seen before. And that was a big discovery. That was a big invention. So um, for everybody's notice and understanding, I'm talking about RRGs, the relative rotation graphs. And this is the unique map uh, to track the markets. And you, ladies and gentlemen, are basically going to get uh, chances to ask questions to the very founder. To Julius de Campanero, right? So speaking of the history, we know a lot about, about your backstory, which makes sense. And I appreciate the, the exclamation before and the difference between the loaders and the tractors. I still <laughs> need to get, get myself down around that one time. Uh, <laughs> um, until then, still, I'd love to discover a little bit more on behalf of the audience, you know, uh, let us help understand the sector rotation. Like how, how do we even get together to it? You know, what are the basics? What is, what is important? Yes, um, so I have, I have prepared uh, a presentation uh, for you guys. So if you can, you can share my screen uh, or present my screen to the audience, then we can, we can uh, talk about it. And there's, um, there's one thing I want to make clear. This is a, this is a very um, introductory presentation. I don't know if uh, if anyone has already seen RRGs, know about RRGs. So, uh, Adrian, I'm going to ask you to. And when I'm looking to my left, it means because there's my other screen, and that's where I can see the chat and and the output. So forgive me if I'm not looking straight into the camera. That's, that's trying okay. to keep an eye on what's going on. Um, I'll take that excuse. So if there are any questions, uh, please bring them up. And Adrian, if you see people having questions or saying, "Hey, this guy is boring because I know all of this." <laughs> then let me know and we'll speed it up. We go to the next gear and we go, uh, and I'm pretty sure that, I, you know, if people are doing that, I'm going to make their head spin. So be warned. If you, if you ask, <laughs> if you ask it, you're going to get it. So, oh, um, yeah. but let's, let's just start with let's the basics it. and see how it goes. And if we can entertain the, the audience uh, enough to keep going or we need to change a plan. So I, you're in change of the plan, my friend. Um, <clears throat> let's go. Starting the presentation, I want you to, to make a mental memo of this number on the screen, 435. And you will know, you will notice later on in the presentation why this is a particular number. <clears throat> but I'm going to keep your attention now because you're going to watch every slide to figure out what 435 means. So it's a little psyops trick. All life is about choices. Yeah, as you're an investor or whatever you do, you're facing choices every day. There's a multiple of choices. And that is what makes sometimes life difficult, but it definitely makes investing difficult because um, are you going to buy? Are you going to sell? Are you going to hold? Are you going to switch from A to B? Are you going to uh, buy Cardano, buy Ripple, buy Bitcoin? Are you going to invest in sectors? There is a lot, a lot, a lot of choices. And um the landscape is very, very crowded, and sometimes it's very difficult to see the forest from the trees. And RG is a tool that can help you to make those decisions and see a little bit through the forest uh, and identify the various trees. <clears throat> when I start talking about investing, um, I try to make that clear. It's like basically you have a bag of money and you got to decide what you're going to do. And it starts at the top with an asset allocation decision. And the easiest asset allocation decision that you can make is whether you're going to buy bonds or equities. Or you can add crypto to it if you want to. Uh, but let's just stick with bonds and equities for the time being. By the way, throughout my presentation, you will see um, a bias towards stocks and sectors. Uh, that, because that's where RRG was born. It came out of a sector rotation problem. Uh, but... You know, it can be it can basically be applied to any freely traded financial market, as you can see. So when you have to make that decision, then maybe the next level of decision is if you're going to buy bonds or stocks in the US, in Europe or Asia. That's basically a geographical decision that you need to make. So uh, from a decision with two choices, bonds or equities, we're now looking at uh, Six choices, because we can do bonds in various regions and we can buy equities in various regions. And then we need to decide how much and how many. So you can, you can already see when I build this up and you can imagine how many layers we can add to that decision tree, um, it'll, it'll get pretty complex pretty fast. Um, and, and we need tools to actually 
keep ourselves on track and keep eye on the bigger picture because that's the if there is one main topic that I need to give you that I want to give you and for you to be a takeaway for this presentation is that an RRG can help you to keep an eye on the big picture. I think that's the main takeaway. If you if you're bored right now, you can leave. If you're interested, you stay and we'll talk about it. Um, <clears throat> in our technical toolkit, uh, we have a lot of indicators. There's a ton of indicators, stochastics, RSI, MACDs, um, I don't know, whatever, every variation, but there's only one tool that can help you to make choices, and that is relative strength. And I'm not talking about RSI. I'm talking about comparative relative strength. So the um, uh, one against another type analysis, that, that type of relative strength. And that's where it can help you to uh, make decisions on where you should be investing. And the chart here shows the, the healthcare sector, the, the, the item doesn't really matter, it's not that important. What's more important is the, um, the, the relative strength line that's below it. It's, it's actually very simple. It's the healthcare sector divided by SPY, XLV divided by SPY. If that line moves down, we, you should be invested in SPY because healthcare is now underperforming SPY. And what's interesting is that you can see that the price is moving up. So even though the price is moving up, what this indicator tells me is that the market, SPY, is moving up even faster than the healthcare sector. And then when it moves sideways, both are in tandem. And then when it starts to move higher, that is a signal that healthcare is now outperforming SPY. And that's what we are playing around with. That's the relative type of relative strength that we're dealing with. We're trying to find sectors, markets, uh, cryptocurrencies that are outperforming whatever benchmark we are using. That's the, the relative strength that we're dealing with. The problem is it is a one-on-one -on -one comparison. You can do this for the healthcare sector versus the S&P 500. You can do it for technology versus the S&P 500. You can do it for um, Ether versus Bitcoin or Cardano versus Bitcoin or whatever and try to figure out what the strongest currencies are. The relative strength concept applies to pretty much every financial market. Now, when you, because what we try to do is we try to find trends. We try to find trends in these relative strength lines. Now, here you have uh, basically a ton of relative strength lines. These are the 11 S&P sectors in the stock market. And the horizontal line here is the S&P 500. So you can see when a line is above it, uh, it's actually outperforming the S&P 500. When it's below, it's, it's underperforming the S&P 500. But you can see that um, it's crucial where we start the comparison. This is about this is about a year's worth, so this 12-month round of strength. But you can imagine that when I would start like here, like halfway through the year, that image would look completely different. Um, and that's immediately the problem that you have with classical relative strength analysis. A lot of people uh, use comparative relative strength by just anchoring it in the past or looking back six months, three months, 12 months. And then when uh, some security is above the benchmark, say, hey, it's outperforming the S&P 500. Um, so <clears throat> for example, say that we would start here, then it would have a positive relative strength. But all of this time, it would have been underperforming. It's only the last bit here that is outperforming. Is that really what you want? I am way more interested to get out somewhere here and get back in somewhere here. So we need a little bit more of a more sophisticated trend following analysis uh, that we can help and especially that we can use across the universe because that's one of the biggest problems when you, uh, when you work with relative strength. This, this type of chart, uh, in my opinion, I, I, you, I cannot speak for yourself, but uh, for me, this is quite unreadable. It becomes a pretty big mess. Uh, this type of spaghetti charts, I, type, I like to call them because for me, they're pretty useless. <clears throat> shout now, out to all the Italian people in the chat here. Yeah? Sorry, say again. Shout out to all the Italian people in the chat. Ah, I really love there you go. <laughs> Gra grazie mille. Bienvenuto. Grazie mille. <laughs> hi. Hi, hi, hi. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when you talk about getting an overview, and when you when you stick with sectors, but you can you you can you can change all these sector codes for different uh, cryptocurrencies if you want. 
<clears throat> what happens when you when you deal with a universe, you get a lot of combinations, a, a lot of individual combinations. And uh, this is a 10 by 10 universe, so you got 100 blue squares. And every blue square is an individual comparison. Now, when you've seen, this is the energy sector uh, against the energy sector, that's obviously, you don't need to compare that because that's always one. There is no, there's no difference there. Same with technology versus technology. So out of these 100, I can lose 10. I can lose the number of securities inside that, um, uh, inside that universe because against each other, they, they, th that doesn't make any sense. Now, when I've seen, when I've looked and studied technology versus financials, I have already seen financials versus technology because it's the reverse. It's the reverse of the ratio. And the same for, uh, let's say, energy versus utilities. I've already seen utilities versus energy because, again, it's the reverse. So that means that out of these 100, I can lose that bottom part of that matrix. But this still leaves me with 45 possible combinations. It means that I need to flip through 45 individual charts. Now, the GIX classification, and for those of you who are not aware, GIX stands for Global Industry Classification System. Uh, it's run by MSCI and S&P, and they classify all the stocks in the world into um, sectors, industry groups, industries, and sub-industries. So it's a pretty detailed breakdown of the stock market universe. <clears throat> Sectors is the highest level. If you're of 10, then there is a formula that you can use to calculate the number of combinations. I just showed you the 45, so it's 10 times 10 is 100. You can deduct the number of uh, elements in the universe, in this case, 10. That leaves me with 90, 90. That's the entire matrix. I need to divide it by two because I don't need to do the reverses. Leaves me with 45. There are 25 industry groups. That would lead to 625 minus 25, 600 divided by three is 300. Now, who of you can tell me how many combinations are in the Dow Jones Industrials? The Dow Jones Industrial sector holds 30 stocks. How many combinations would I need to browse through to figure out what the best and the worst stocks are in the uh, Dow Jones 30, in the 30 stock universe? How many? Drop your answers in the charts. Uh, in the charts, yeah. Drop your answers. So, what's the answer? It was on the first slide. There you go. Surprise, surprise. Four hundred and thirty-five. The eleven is because gigs moved from ten to eleven sectors, so it's fifty-five. But thirty times thirty, it's nine hundred combinations. That's only thirty stocks. The, the Dow Jones Industrial is a very small universe. It's a very small, very small index. 900 combinations. We can deduct 30 because there are 30 stocks in there. 870 divided by two, 435 individual combinations. That if I want to know what is the best stock or the worst stock in the S P in the Dow Jones 30, 435 different charts to watch. <clears throat> that is difficult, um, and that is what I'm saying. Classic relative strength. Uh, you still would need to flip through 435 charts, 435 one-on-one -on -one comparisons. So trying to view things in a broader context is more difficult. And um, you know that I, I've been trained uh, as a military officer, and one of the, one of the key components, one of the uh, first things you learn in the military is uh, what's called situational awareness or overwatch. Uh, meaning that you need to have the big picture to make sure what's going on on the battlefield. <clears throat> and uh, what you see in the picture in the background is what's called an overwatch unit. It's usually uh, a small group of special forces with uh, observers and snipers who find a higher ground where they can oversee the battlefield. They're in Are constant you somewhere touch. In the picture? The... Uh, no, I'm not. In the picture somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm the guy here on, on the left <laughs> resting. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so, so they're in constant touch with the troops on the ground, and they can direct them. They can see uh, there is there is there is uh, a threat coming there. There's an opportunity coming there, 
Um, and that's how I'd like to see an RRG uh, as some sort of an overwatch as a, as a tool to give you a situational awareness and point you to threats and opportunities. So the tagline that we use is RRG gives you the big picture in one picture. Um, and again, that's, I, I think, the most important takeaway when you start using RRGs, uh, that it can help you to, to create a bigger picture, to help you oversee the, the big puzzle. In, in a sense, it's, it's a, the financial markets are one jigsaw puzzle with all these little pieces that we need to stick together. And RRG can help you to, to, to put that, that puzzle together. Now, back to relative strength analysis, because um, one of the problems with relative strength is that you cannot really compare the numerical values of relative strength across a universe. So this image is of the material sector. And as you can see, the, the line is moving up. And I, I just explained to you when the line is moving up, the sector is doing well. When the line is moving down, the sector is doing not so well. So I, I hope you agree with me that this relative strength line is suggesting or indicating that the material sector in this time uh, is outperforming the S&P 500. So it's a good thing. You look at the numerical value and make a mental memo here. It's 0.182. That's the numerical value of the ratio of the material sector versus the S&P 500. Now, if I go to the healthcare sector, and again, I hope you agree with me that this line is now moving down. So the healthcare sector is underperforming the S&P 500. Um, and you will see that the numerical value is 0.32. Now let that sink in. So 0.32, but the line is moving down. And we had 0.182 and the line is moving up. So there is no way I can use that numerical value to say, hey, the healthcare sector is at 0.32. So it's better than the material sector, which is at 182. That, that doesn't work. So the numerical values cannot be compared. They're completely depending on where that, that uh, sector and where that uh, benchmark is trading. So what we need to do, we need to find the direction of that line. We actually need to find the trend of that line and know whether it's going up or down. And we also need to do that in a way that it is comparable across the universe. And that's, the, that's one of the biggest problems that you have when you start doing with relative strength analysis. And that's one of the things that RRGs are trying to solve. <clears throat> so these, these individual RS lines, they give a pretty good clue about what's, what's happening for individual comparisons versus the benchmark. It will tell you uh, whether the, the security or the sector is good or bad. It doesn't tell you how good or how bad, or let alone the best and the worst. So these raw RS values, uh, like I I'd like to call them, are like apples and oranges, uh, and you cannot compare them. So what we need to do is find trends in a normalized way in these relative strength values against the benchmark and against each other. And if we have that, that enables us to create a ranking inside a universe. And basically, this, this all came to life when I was working on the sell side. And fund managers were always asking me, uh, what are your best five stocks? What are your best three sectors? And I really couldn't answer that. I, I could tell them, hey, this is good and this is bad. But I couldn't tell them what is the best and what is the worst. So over time, working with these you know, values and these metrics and trying to find out trends and comparing them, that led to uh, what is now known as the JDK RS ratio. That is the underlying metric of relative trends that is used in a relative rotation graph. And when you put that on a chart, uh, and here's an example, as we have it on stock charts, it's on other systems as well. So the red line here is the RS ratio. That is the metric of relative strength. This red line here tries to find trends in that raw relative strength line. Now, there's a bit of a story here because this was my metric that I used uh, at the end of the 90s and early 2000s. And if you were around trading at that time, my God, that's two, 20 years ago. Jesus. Um, they uh, <laughs> I just realized that it's really long ago. But the story, the story is still good. <laughs> it's, um, give it I, was, give I, it. I, I was working on the sell side and... Um, uh, the NASDAQ was trading around 5,000, highest level ever. We're still not back there. And um, uh, the, 
all my, based on my RS ratio, based on my ranking, all these stocks, I had them all on outperformance, outperformance, outperformance. They were all buy signals. <laughs> and then that market, that tech market started, that's the dot-com bubble basically, started to come down. And <laughs> you just said, uh, shout out to the Italian people. It was actually, I got an email from an Italian hedge fund manager. <laughs> there's go. no there's no joke it's true he uh he wrote me hey julius this time your system didn't work too well and i was reading that i was watching my charts and my stuff and that you know, obviously nasdaq started tumbling down and all my i still had buy recommendations and outperformance like oh my god <laughs> yeah he's right uh, what can i do about that and i was like uh damn so i went back to the drawing board and started figuring out okay so you know, obviously there's a trend following component in the RS ratio, that's clear. Um, but what can I do to, to get a little bit of an early warning signal or a uh, heads up that something is slowing down? So I start playing around and obviously in the technical toolkit, we have rate of change, momentum. And we all know that that is a leading indicator. You know, before, before a trend changes, the momentum will slow down and then when it trains, it turns around. So I started playing around with, uh, with the rate of change values, obviously running into the same problems as I had with my role relative strength, not comparable across the universe, only individual one-on-ones. Um, so I had to go through that whole ordeal of getting that all <clears throat> uh, normalized and comparable, uh, like I did with the JDK RS ratio. And that ended up being the JDK RS momentum value. So all of a sudden, I find myself with two metrics, RS ratio, RS momentum, which I could plot on a chart like this uh, and, and tell something because now these, these values, the, these numerical values, uh, I could use. So what I did is I would create a spreadsheet with those two columns and I could rank and I could play around and slice and dice based on these momentum and ratio values. That, that was it. And uh, over time, I thought I need to actually start playing around with it. And I, I started just literally playing around in Excel, trying to look at, at various um, uh, charting formats. And that ended up being a, uh, a scatter plot. And uh, just as an introduction, this is how a relative rotation graph looks. <laughs> and this, R sorry, <clears throat> this RRG captures those 435 relations that we just identified. So this one chart helps you to get an angle on 435 <laughs> individual rotations. So for example, Caterpillar here on the top right <clears throat> is outperforming the S&P 500, the S&P or the Dow Jones Industrial, sorry, which is in the middle, but it's also outperforming BA, which is right here because it's got a higher RS value than BA. So there is, you can compare everything with everything. Now, if we do a, um, a definition, then I think that we need to say uh, and establish it that a relative rotation graph will show trends in relative strength or trends in performance of multiple securities in a universe against the common benchmark and against each other. So please be careful. They don't show relative performance as such. Um, and we'll, we'll, I think we will get into that later on when we start looking at RRGs and performance figures. That makes sense real quick, Julius, right? Because that's that's already for, for the audience. I think that's that's an excellent rundown so far. And uh, having about, let's say, five or six minutes in this very chapter, uh, we still want to dedicate some time uh, towards the end of the show, you know, into actual real world, real case studies. Sure. Right? So we want to make sure that, that, um, that uh, well, Everybody gets their own cherry on the piece of the, to of the of absolutely. The cake. Still, until until that happens, let's let's try to uh, highlight the most important points that are later going to be useful in terms of navigating, let's say, portfolio management yeah. or you know what sort of. So how much time? How much, along that. how much time do we have left? Oh man, you have all the time in the world. Uh, I would recommend. You just told me just, that uh, few minutes left. <laughs> no, 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 no. Few minutes left in this very section. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, Julius, I can make <laughs> myself available for the rest of my life for you. That's no, okay. No, no, no. You, know, you don't <laughs> want to do that. We're, we're almost yeah. done. We're going to talk about constructing and then we can start uh, looking at interpretation and, and we can bring up a few real time charts. That um, makes sense. So, and in the meantime, in the meantime, real quick for everybody, make sure that if you're watching that on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bells on, right? Drop some comments, drop some hot questions because Julius is here and just maybe is going to be able to take in some of the questions and give it a hot, quick answer. 
And uh, while you're at it, make sure you go ahead and follow Julius the Camp Narrower on Twitter or slash X, I should say, at RRG Research, at RRG Research. You definitely need to have Julius on your list. Do it as I did. That was the one of the best choices I've ever made in my life, and I make a lot of mistakes. And that was definitely <laughs> one of the purest values ever. Go for it. Give yourself a favor. Do yourself a favor. RRG Research on Twitter. And uh, this is what I shut up. Please continue. Yeah, yeah, I made a lot of mistakes. That's. It's funny that it's it comes back to Italians, but um, funny story. I, I was working on a trading floor, and when you're working on a trading floor, and there's IPOs, initial public offerings of stocks, the entire floor needs to go out on their clients and try to entice them to buy that IPO because obviously the bank makes a lot of money when you sell that IPO. So one day it was I, I'm I'm the worst salesman in the business, but you know for some reason I need to go on the phone, and so I talked to an Italian hedge fund manager, another one that sent me that mail. And tell them about that story. Obviously, an IPO, there's no technical. So I was doing my best trying to make the best out of it. Guy signs up to buy 350,000 shares of that IPO. All right. Yeah, yeah, really good. And then two months later, uh, obviously, that whole thing collapses. It was crap. It was one of these new biotech stocks, I believe. So complete disaster. The guy oh, sends me an email, says, uh, don't call me anymore with IPOs. I'm very good at making my own mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> All right. End of story right there. Okay. Oh, yeah. So um, what I was telling you, we had the RS ratio, we had the RS momentum, uh, two metrics, <clears throat> plotting on individual charts. And then I was playing around with Excel. And at some stage, I hit the scatter plot button. And then I got a scatter plot with those little dots around. And you know, it's one of these moments where you look at something and you're like, what is that? What am I actually looking at? And I, I needed a couple of days to figure out, you know, like, what is this doing? How does that work, etc. And, you know, looking at it, playing around with that, improving it became an RRG as we know it right now. And the basic construction is the scatter plot canvas with their R's ratio on the horizontal scale, R's momentum on the vertical scale. And what you will see is when you start to populate it, what will happen in the top right-hand corner, you will find the securities with a, uh, up, a relative uptrend versus the benchmark. And that uptrend is still being pushed higher by positive momentum. So it's the best of both worlds. You've got strong relative trend and it's positive momentum pushing that trend higher. As we know, uh, rate of change momentum is a leading indicator. So the first thing that will happen is that your rate of change will start to roll over. That's when that security moves into the weakening quadrant. It's still an uptrend, but it's losing its pace. It's losing its acceleration. That's why it's moving to that weakening. It's, it's taking a break. <laughs> if that weakness continues, then it moves into the lagging quadrant. And there we have relative downtrends, and those downtrends are being pushed lower by weak momentum. And then obviously, just like on the other side, uh, momentum is the first thing that will start to turn up, and it will push the security into the improving quadrant. Uh, still a relative downtrend, but the relative downtrend is leveling off and you know gradually starting to move higher. And if that improvement continues, we will get that circular rotation that everybody's always talking about uh, called sector rotation. And everybody's always talking about sector rotation, but nobody was ever able to show it to me that it was actually rotating. You know, everybody was talking about sector rotation, was showing you these sine waves. You know, the cycle go up and then it go down and it go up and it go, goes in that sine wave. <laughs> that was how people used to visualize sector rotation. And when I got this, it's like, oh wow, it's actually rotating. It's rotating around the center of the of the chart, and it's rotating clockwise. So that was quite of an aha moment, like, hey, this is really cool. And when you then start to populate it, uh, you get this. This was the first one with only one dot. And you know, although this is already quite helpful in figuring out what's going on inside the universe, um, there's something missing. Um, and what's missing is where is it coming from? Is, is, is this dot, was the previous version there, or was it here, or was it there? What's happening? Um, and 
there's there's a, there's there's a, there's a story here. Dave, you know Dave Keller, Adrian. You know, yeah, he, he, of course he I do. To. Shout out to great. Dave Keller, CMT, our mutual <laughs> friend. Absolutely. Um, so when I was working on the sell side and had this in my private spreadsheet type stuff, very it wasn't as beautiful as it's now done by stock charts and Optima and all the others that have programmed RRG. Um, I wrote a report, and the last page of my report held basically this chart here. And Dave was managing director of research at Fidelity in Boston, and he was one of my clients. And when you're working on a trading floor, every few weeks you talk to your clients. So I was on the phone with uh, with Dave one day, and and you know talking about sectors and stocks and everything. And he said, Julius, like um, the last page of your report, I print that out and stick it on the wall. And my report was a PDF report, and the last page held what you can now see as an RRG. <clears throat> so I said, why, why would you do that? Uh, I mean, it's, uh, he said, well, you know, <laughs> um, and you know, you know, in high school when you're bored in class and you've got your notebook and you draw a little puppet, like a, a round with a stick and then two legs and two arms, and then on the, on the next page you draw the same guy and then the arm are are like that and then on the same on, on a, a little, little bit further and then when you when you take your when you've done it uh, and class is over you can take that whole stack of paper and do like and then you can see i need to stand up you can see that little guy moving moving like that across the across the bottom of your of your notebook and and that was the, was what, what he was doing with with these images he was like good and he said and then i can see it actually rotate and for me that was like Wow, we need to animate it. We need to actually add history to it. And that's where we started to add like these segments. And now this is only one um, additional observation, and, but it already helps you to figure out where is it coming from. And you can actually make that longer and it gives you a little bit more uh, of a historical perspective. Or you can do it like this. And now, it, now it's a real spaghetti chart because it's absolutely useless. You can't see anymore. <laughs> but when we highlight, one of those, you can make that actually, uh, that's not there. Um, we can actually highlight those moves and then make it animated. And now you can play through history uh, and see how that rotation of individual stocks or individual securities around the benchmark is going. And you can, I hope you agree with me that it's actually, oh, one more back, that it's actually, um, uh, uh, Come on, buddy. I want to play you again. There you go. That is actually, you can see the circular movement uh, around the center of the chart. And that's where the strength comes in. You can actually see that circle, that sector rotation going on. Shall we move on to interpretation right away, or do you want to look at a real chart? I, I love it. I love it. I mean, it makes a lot of sense so far for everybody. There are some questions piling up in the chat, so I'm going to definitely... Uh, on behalf of community, I appreciate if we take to take a look at them. And uh, in a second, right, there are questions about where we are in the economic cycle. There are questions about can RRGs be effectively used to time entry and exit points, especially in the lower time frame. So why don't we take a look at, at the actual uh, case studies, right? Because having learned already a little bit about the basics yeah. of the RRG, if we take, take a moment and then display perhaps the actual current charts that we have stocked up, um, full disclosure, I often use RRG myself, right? I use it for my reports, I use it for general navigation. So that's going to be a uh, great, great value, I think, for a lot of a lot of traders to try to understand the real uh, the real picture, right? The real actual <coughs> use case of the RRGs. And uh, well, that's exactly for everybody. That's exactly where we are heading just in a second. Uh, so Julius, if we, if we want to take a couple of minutes and uh, well, talk us through what, what do you see kind of like at this very particular moment um, for the sector ETFs as I see it. Is that right? Yeah, so here are, here are the sector ETFs. Uh, this, this is just my default, so it brings up, but I can bring up, uh, I can bring up a lot of stuff here. Um, <laughs> so if people are interested in, in you know, the, the stock market stuff, then one of the things that I've started doing is uh, to, to even better visualize it, is breaking it down into uh, cyclical, defensive, and sensitive. And if you do it like this, so here, these are what are known as the cyclical sectors. And that doesn't look super strong. 
you know, uh, discretionary is moving into lagging, not great. Financials is okay-ish, but very close to the benchmark. By the way, one of the takeaways when you look at an ROG, the further a security is away from the benchmark, the more potential alpha you have. Because stuff that's moving very close to the benchmark is moving in line with the benchmark. So uh, real estate is very weak right now. It's jumped over the last day, but look at the, the, the relative weakness in the, inside this group. It's still one of the weaker sectors. If you look at materials, that is now rotating back to the lagging quadrant. And that allows me to um, <laughs> explain a little bit more about rotations because in a theoretical world, the rotations are going through all four quadrants sequentially, as I showed you on my slide. In the real world, that doesn't always happen. Um, and Axel B here is a very good example. Let me highlight the tail. And now we can play it around and see how that moves. So it's coming out of leading, in improve, into weakening, goes into lagging, goes to a very weak streak. And you can see here that the S&P was actually moving higher. So uh, materials underperforming the S&P 500, continuing, continuing, continuing. It starts to improve, and in, but instead of pulling all the way through into the leading quadrant, it actually rolled over and started moving down and is now entering the lagging quadrant again. This is one of the strongest signals that you can get because what's happening here is materials are in a relative downtrend, uh, but you know that trends are never a straight line. So that basically you're looking at the trend of that raw relative strength line that we discussed at the start of the presentation. That, that wasn't a straight line down. That was like a series of lower highs and lower lows. You can, you can interpret a, um, a relative strength chart just like you would interpret a price chart. So when you see lower highs and lower lows on the relative strength line, that's a downtrend. And what's happening here is that we have an established downtrend in the material sector, which moves to a new high, but it's a lower high. So what's happening here, this is a lower high in a series of lower highs and lower lows. And now we're starting a new down lag in an already existing relative downtrend. So that is one of the most, um, uh, how do you say it, secure, uh, reliable, most reliable signals that you can get. And you can also get it on the right-hand side where you see a security going from leading into weakening and then curling back up. Because what happens there is that you are entering um, a security which is already in a relative uptrend and is moving it has made a higher low and is starting a new up lag in an already rising trend so right now the cyclical sectors are quite <clears throat> spread out I, I don't think this the, the main takeaway here is that it's a very strong group uh, and that is normally you would expect these sectors to do very well when the market's doing very well so that's a bit of a risk in the market right now that the cyclical sectors are not really participating yet. So if while we while we while we there while we there, um, you know, it can be cyclicals, can be can be the other one. So there is an actual question, right? They're speaking, I think, in terms of this very particular chart. So um, the uh, our our audience member is going by the excellent name of Cannibal Sheep. Uh, that's gonna. <laughs> I love the names, man. You gotta love the names in crypto. Uh, he's uh, he's asking. They, they're asking a very very good question, right? So, uh, how can we how can we use what you're actually displaying in the RRGs right now for the cyclicals and kind of like decide about any sort of like entry and exit points, right? How does it inform you anyway about that? Well, first of all, as I tried to explain in the beginning, it's a it's a high level overview. So, um, an RRG chart as such does not have very firm trading rules. Um, I, I, I want to counter Cannibal and ask him what his trading rules are for a bar chart. There are, you know, everybody looks at a bar chart and they have different, if you're very aggressive, you probably trade maybe a five-day breakout or a five-day moving average. If you're a little bit more uh, conventional, you uh, may trade a 20-day or a 50-day breakout or you trade a 50-day moving average. An RRG is, is 
<coughs> along the same lines. Uh, we're looking at weekly RRGs. We can make them uh, daily. Uh, means that we're looking at shorter term charts. And here you can clearly see the recent improvement in the market backed by strength in those cyclical sectors. Um, but the weeklies are still there. So the question now is, is this move on the daily strong enough to pull all those weeklies to the other side? I don't know. I'll let the market tell me. Now, back to the question. Um, there are no strict rules. There are guidelines. I can give you guidelines about my experience on how it works. And one of the things that I explained is these rotations that are taking place on, on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side, those are the most reliable. So here is, again, materials rolling over. You can see that they're all moving into that top right-hand corner. We call that RRG heading. That's where they are moving to. Just think in terms of a compass. So here you saw, the, so this is uh, November the 1st, November the 2nd. You saw the underlying improvement in the cyclical sectors picking up. And then it continues and you see real estate, financials and uh, discretionary moving into leading. But you also see the materials sector not making it and moving back down. So materials has basically lost the race inside the cyclical sectors, meaning that these are now inside leading. So they are good, but they're, you know, uh, discretionary is still okay in terms of momentum, but real estate and financials have lost over the last few days. But it gives you a pretty good clue about what's going on inside these uh, cyclical sectors. If I move on to the defensive sectors, then I can see that they are picking up, but you can see that healthcare is moving over. And the question now is, will utilities and staples follow that path or will they follow through? Let's have a look at the daily version of this chart. And uh, here you go. You can see the weakness of these defensive sectors over the last, this is 10 trading days, but we can scroll it back. And you can see that this started somewhere here. So that's November the 9th. So that's about six days ago. And you can see how they are now rapidly heading. So this is uh, basically confirming the recent strength because in, in strong stock markets, you will see defensive sectors weakening and you will see cyclical sectors improving and then the so, the, the game sorry go ahead yeah 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 uh, so that this is a little bit of a uh, i actually um if i were to rephrase it in you know in simple ter terms for lyman like that i am um what what julie's is saying i think you know is that you can inform your decisions for instance on portfolio management strategies right just yes. for just taking an example, there is uh, there is the momentum investing strategy, right? Which basically relies on the relative strength and putting all the you know all the assets and securities in the rankings and following the strengths, the up minus down, right? You long the strength and short the weakness, and yes. uh, well, at times the entries, you know, the entries, the entries and the exits here are always going to be probably much more favorable when you use timing with the techniques, right? With some volume breakouts, with the breadth breakouts, volatility breakouts, just like Julie said, new highs, new 52 week highs, you know, the breadth worsen, you know, worsening and so on. Still, you, if you do not trade in isolation and you want to build a portfolio, you're gonna be able to expose yourself to what's performing well by choosing the leading sectors and short the lagging sectors. So it basically, informs your decisions in terms of the portfolio management rather than just the trade management. Isn't that right, Julius? Yeah, absolutely. And and that is all because this was introduced first at the institutional world where professional fund managers I was talking to, um, they need to run a portfolio, 100 million, 500 million euros, 500 million dollars. Um, first of all, these guys cannot, uh, uh, they don't have the liberty to go to cash. So even if they feel the market's gonna go down, they still need to be invested. Um, and their job is to outperform the benchmark. That's what drives them. Uh, so even if the market goes down, they need to outperform. So they're playing the game where, um, they're, they're playing the game that, oh, come on. They're playing the game that um, market has gone down 10% and your portfolio has gone down 5%. So you're a hero because you have outperformed the market by 5%. You still lost 5% of your client's money, but that doesn't matter. You outperform the market. And that's where RG comes in, helps, uh, helps these guys to outperform the market. When you transfer that to a retail guy, you can very well 
um, use this to, for example, come up with pair trading ideas, long one side, short the other one. Uh, you can do that with cryptocurrencies. You can find where you want to be long, where you want to be short, and you can create a crypto portfolio using this. By the way, we're talking so why about- So wh yeah, exactly. why, why don't we take a look at the actual crypto portfolio, right? Because what I, what I find, what I think, you know, people, uh, some, some of the audience members might be interested to see is, well, what sort of cryptos am I going to invest in? Where, where should I go all in right now immediately, right? Just the exactly. So the finger, right? you put yeah, all let's, let's, let's start with one thing here. <clears throat> um, cryptos are like fiat currencies in terms of trading. Um, so <clears throat> I need to reverse my story to crypto, but I'll try to do that. So what is the price of Bitcoin? The, the, the price of Bitcoin does not exist, just like the price of the US dollar does not exist. It is Bitcoin expressed in US dollars. Bitcoin expressed in Japanese yen. Bitcoin expressed in whatever fiat currency you want. But also Bitcoin expressed in Ether or the other way around. Forex and crypto are always relationships. So in a way, they are already a metric of relative strength. Yeah, so that's a big difference by when you look at stock sectors, you need to compare it to the S&P or the Dow. So what I use to, to make a basic RRG for that is I use a symbol on stock charts. We have a symbol that's called dollar one. And that's basically uh, a metric that's always one. So because we already have a relative metric, we don't need another. So that's how you get that. So what we see here, and because all these uh, um, cryptocurrencies are as expressed in US dollars, the US dollar is the center of the chart. So what this tells us is the position of this group of cryptocurrencies versus the US dollar. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you the honors, uh, Adrian. What does this look like? What does this tell you? What does this tell me? Um, yeah. I'd say, you know, if I were a portfolio manager, I would place my focus on the FTT Sol link. No, the, uh, big the, big, the big picture. The big picture. The, just the first thing you look at. Uh, Bull, everything. This is a bull, that, bull market. Bull market it is. It's a it's bull market in crypto. All that stuff is moving to the top right-hand corner. By the way, this is a weekly chart. So these are pretty decent trends. Uh, this is not a one-way thing. So the big takeaway from this chart is that crypto is now in a bull market versus the US dollar. Pretty much all of these cryptos, maybe, you know, XLM, not necessarily, but all the others are just flying away and outperforming the US dollar. Now, position yourself as a crypto portfolio manager and Bitcoin is your benchmark. You want to outperform the performance of Bitcoin. You need to beat Bitcoin. What we do then is we actually load up the same group, but we change the benchmark to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin US dollar. So now we have a relative rotation graph of the cryptocurrencies. And now the center of the chart is Bitcoin. And this is the price of Bitcoin. That's our benchmark. That's what we're looking at. And now we can play around and say, hey, what do we like? Where, where are our chances? Where are our threats? And I can just like here, Solana, that's one that you probably want to look at. Link, Chainlink, FTT. That's kind of a special one. I'm uh, not sure whether I want to, uh, to chase that, but it's showing up. And it showed up already you know, a couple of days ago. Uh, sorry, a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's, it's actually, this, this, it's good that it's showing up here because what I always stress people is do not trade solely off of an RRG. You always want to go and look at the chart because that's where you're trading. You're not trading an RRG. You're not trading the value of the RS ratio. You're not trading the value of the RS momentum. You're trading the actual price. So if you want to do that, I would suggest you bring up the individual chart and when I see this, I like, oh, oh, okay, okay, maybe it's too late. Maybe I don't want to chase that, um, but I'm going to keep an eye on it. The interesting thing is that it already started. Look at, these are the RRG lines. Oh, that's for a spy. I need to change that to UTC USD. Oops. Let me see USD. Let's update that. So here, 
daily, you can see that it was already inside improving because the green line was above. Um, well, it's about, depends a little bit on where you were, like one or two days late. So I guess around 225, 250, you could, you could have gone in uh, probably. Um, but the good thing is we can also do this on intraday levels. Uh, let's, let's stick with the, with the weekly for a while. Uh, and, and look at the bigger trends. Um, these are good. This is, this is an interesting one. I would like to see the chart of this one. Just because it's so far on the outside, I want to know what's going on there. And then basically everything that's moving in the top right direction at a heading between 0 and 90 degrees has my interest. So that's a, that's a big group now. This one, uh, Bi uh, Binance Coin, BNB, uh, not so much because it's moving the other way. But this is good. This one I don't like. This would be interested. This would be interested. This would be interested. And now we go to the ones that are less interesting. Everything that's in the red, I'd be very careful with. This is definitely an outlier. So my immediate takeaway, I want to see a chart that compares XLM as a potential short and SRM as a potential long. They're both very far away from the benchmark, meaning they have uh, moved away from their trends and one is going one direction and one is going the other direction. Potentially a nice trade to, uh, to set up, but you will need to go to the individual chart to make up your mind and take a decision. Uh, and as I said, we can do this on the daily chart as well. So you'll get the little bit shorter term uh, looks. And here, this is obviously getting closer, but we can see where the outliers are. So here's FTT again. Um, Personally, I would stay away from that because, you know, whatever is going on there, there's a lot of additional stuff going on, maybe not too technically driven, um, but everything else. So what I do then is I just switch this off. Gives me a better view here. Um, SRM, YFI. What is this one here? Oh, Solana, Ava, all that stuff worth looking at. This one, Chainlink, not so much anymore. Shorter term, this... So, you know, it will very, you just very quickly give me thousands and thousands of people of Chainlink, man. Just broke their hearts. Sorry, say again? <laughs> just broke the hearts of the Link Marines, man. <laughs> the Link Marine. Um, well, they, the have, they, Marines, they went through yeah. it. it you know, it's, still in, it's still inside the, the leading quadrant. But as you can see, it has lost a bit of momentum. It's not dramatic yet. But, you know, there's, there's now, you know, if you're a short-term trader, you, you're probably better off looking at, uh, you know, SRM, Serum, or uh, maybe even this one here, because that's they still pick up a momentum. So th if you're a really long-term trader, I think I, I, I actually mentioned uh, uh, Chainlink yesterday on Coindesk Television. That was interesting. So, there you go. so I, I, I did something well. Look at, look at Link here. This is a super nice tail on the weekly. So the long-term trend is all good. Depends a little bit on what your investment horizon is. If you're... If you're a buy and hold or you're in it for the longer term, it's one of the better coins. If you go to the weekly, you can see that it might be going through a bit of a setback. Not, not a problem, no, you know, no harm done. Uh, but the, the ROG will give you that information. Um, and as I said, we can also do this intraday, like, I don't know, like a 30 minute chart, and you will get the exact same uh, type of rotation. But now, every dot, every node is 30 minutes worth of trading. And you can see the exact same moves. Uh, so here's, that's FTT again. Uh, I, Sam, what have you done? <laughs> that's right, so, that's all right. One yeah, year ago. So, yeah, so, uh, so here you go. Um, you can see that, but the, the, the point is that you will see whatever time frame, whatever universe, you will continue to see that rotating character of financial markets around the benchmark. Look at this. This is, I, I, I joke to people, if, if I cannot read the ticker symbol, it's not worth trading. I need to watch mm. the stuff. When I, can, when I can read the ticker symbol, that has my interest because that's where it's actually where the moves are being made. Here, Solana. So this is actually, this was um, midnight. So 1.12.30, um, two days ago. Uh, so mm. you can actually, you know, play around with this. And, and again, depending on how 
what your investment horizon is, uh, you can use you can bring RRG to use on crypto, on stocks, on ETFs, on fiat forex, whatever you like. Love it, love it. That's that's been an excellent rundown, Julius. And uh, having about two three minutes left uh, out of the show, we've been enjoying about well, and even longer than ever this session. And it keeps coming up. It keeps uh, piling up. You know, with the questions, with uh, with um, with so much incredible comments of appreciation for you, for RG, for what you do and what you're presenting. And again, for everybody, RRG is an excellent tool that I use for myself, you know, for navigating. It's kind of like trying to weeding out what's not what's what's not good, what's actually good out there. It's like a quick way to just by taking a look at one chart, replacing just like we said, 435 combinations, just, you know, for, for the stocks them alone. And, you know, there is there is. There is so much value and so much time-saving utility in that uh, that it just makes sense to incorporate it in the daily activities, right? Just like you scan the markets instead of scanning 20 different charts, 50 different charts. You just take a look at one and you immediately know what's worth your attention, what's worth uh, just maybe taking a look, you know, in the long positions and what's taking what's taking makes sense, just taking a look in the short direction. And you know it by just taking the one glance. And it is five seconds or 10 seconds glance instead of 50,000 seconds or, you know, this is like incredible amount of time saved with the ROG. And what Julius has just shared, everybody, this is this is barely a glimpse because it goes on and on and on and on. And the utility is, uh, uh, I don't even know if it's finite. I think it, if, if you could literally find so many compli compli um, combinations, so many implications on how you can use that for your investment strategies, for how you can plan around your portfolio. Because you take a look at a chart, you find what's leading, you find what's lagging, and you actually immediately know, okay, I'm going to just maybe find a way to long this. Right? Maybe I'm going to time and search for the entries to short this and that position, and so on and so forth, right? So if we were, uh, if we were to s slowly wrap, uh, wrap the show, um, Julius, what would you say is... The most important tip for the newcomers, for the people who have just landed at this incredible value that you share for the first time, what is the tip for the beginners in the sector rotation? Um, well, ba basically, you you need to walk before you can run. So uh, uh, I understand from people that sometimes it can be a little bit intimidating when you when you look at an RG for the first time and not knowing what's going on. Uh, there's quite a bit of material around uh, on YouTube and on the internet in general on interpretation of RRGs. Um, if you go to, um, there is a, there, I've got a blog on stockcharts.com, which is actually free. Uh, it's called RRG Charts, uh, where I write articles and you've got links to uh, videos. I have a weekly show on Stock Charts Television on YouTube, on the YouTube channel. And um, I, I noticed someone had asked what I thought about the economic cycle, where we are in the economic cycle. And I'm not sure whether this person has already seen this week's episode of Sector Spotlight or I am just one day ahead of him because we recorded that. And uh, <laughs> that question is actually answered in this show where I go over uh, what I do there is there, there is the, the sector rotation model, um, which way too long to go over that in this time frame, but it's a theoretical model on how sectors should move related to current market moves. And what I'm trying to do is, is fit the tier or fit the current rotation into the theoretical model and find uh, alignment. Because I feel that when the reality aligns with the theory, that's probably um, my odds are better than 50-50. Um, so I do that with, uh, with the economic sector rotation model. I also do that once a month with uh, seasonality. So I look at the seasonality and then I plot an RRG and I look whether my RRG aligns with the se seasonality outcome. <clears throat> and when I see a certain rotation moving in favor or aligned with the what the seasonality suggests, I feel that there is a that that I have better odds of profiting from such a trade or positioning my portfolio because I'm I'm not really a, a short-term trader. I do much more longer-term stuff. That's it. That's that's what Julius does. And uh, well, in between dealing with the loaders and tractors, 
He's just a casual <laughs> legend. He's just one of the most uh, crazily talented people I've ever got to meet in my life. And I feel so honored and blessed every single time I speak with Julius, everybody. So show him some love, especially that he's just turned 60. And this legend is in such a good shape and form, basically, of his mind, on his body and soul. And he keeps on spreading alpha. And he's done this for about an hour and 10 minutes already so far. So give a round of applause. Give some words of appreciation. Share some love with Julius. And uh, please do make sure you actually follow Julius the Camp an Hour. And you're going to find him at the RRG Research, right? At RRG Research. Make him your obligatory follow on your following list. This is, uh, this is an incredible opportunity because the word of RRG is is very deep is very and maybe at times enigmatic however there is incredible information and this information can be profitable so do not uh, hang up on this opportunity follow rg research julius the camp and uh rg you know has definitely changed my life ever since i got to figure it out and just maybe it's gonna change yours any closing remarks julius from you yeah, I've got my contact details on the screen. I'm very approachable, or I'd like to think that I'm very approachable. Uh, I have no problem sharing my email address. Just don't expect an answer like within five minutes after you send me something. Uh, it can take up some time. Sometimes I go through a bunch of emails and just reply to them. But uh, feel free to reach out. Um, you can find, as Adrian said, at RRG Research on, on Twitter, Facebook, uh, as well as LinkedIn. Um, we are on stockcharts.com, Optima, all the names that you see below are licensees of RRG, where you can find our stuff. Um, and again, you know, just if you've got any questions, reach out to me, or if you prefer that through Adrian, and I'm sure it comes to me. Um, you know, whenever you want me back on the show, Adrian, I'll be your guest. I'm happy to that. And when you come to, uh, when you pass through the Netherlands, uh, come visit the farm and we'll put you on a loader. That'll make for a great picture. <laughs> Oh, man, I want to see it so badly. <laughs> Let's do it. Keep pinky promise. Pinky promise. You've Absolutely. Got witnesses. Tons of witnesses, everybody. I'm going to do exactly. it. Exactly. I'm going to do it. Hold me accountable. Everybody, this has been Adrian's Dentrix CMT CryptoVerb, your host for today's excellent session, the closing session of day one of our free trading congress, where you actually get reliable trading education at not a single penny of charge. Give it a round of applause for Julius. Once again, follow RRG Research on Twitter. And, well, we are just getting started. Thank you so much, Julius.